Good mid morning to everybody. Uh, thank you very much for for, for joining um, our webinar uh, today, um, hosted by myself, Fred Kufa. I'll just run through just a, a, a few a few items um, quickly. First of all, the title of the webinar, as you'll see on the screen, is uh, Integrated Business Planning: Driving Growth, Increasing pro pro Productivity, and Improving uh, Customer Service. Um, joining me for today's panel discussion um, is as is, is Paul Ducci from uh, Oliver White. <laughs> um, Paul, I hope you like your your, your, your slide. Um, do you want to just say hello, uh, brief intro to, to the audience? Hi, so my name is Paul, uh, Paul Ducey. I'm one of the partners in Oliver White. I've uh, been a partner for 10 years, and prior to that, I was 24 years in the oil and gas business with BP. Uh, did everything from running a small production plant through to running a business or part of the business. Fantastic, thank you, Paul. Um, and Paul and I have had a few candid conversations around IBP and obviously engaged with, with clients as well. Uh, also joining um, is uh, one of my colleagues, uh, founder of uh, one of the founders of Olive Horse, uh, Ben Janssen van Vieren. Ben? Hi, hi everyone. Uh, yes, over 20 years in, in supply chain, uh, focusing specifically on supply most of my, my career and, and supply chain optimization uh, recently been running some of our our bigger programs especially in in the uh, IBP integrated business planning space uh, from an operational planning perspective uh, and I also drive uh, talent in in all of us excellent thank you Ben um, and uh, finally Riaz Handra um, also a key member of the team and the, the leadership team at all of us um Rias, over to you. Yeah, morning everybody. Uh Rias Andrea started my career uh, kind of mid nineties in the aerospace and defense sector. Um since then I've worked across a broad range of industries in the supply chain field. Um looking at you know midterm planning and scheduling across a range of industries, CPG, pharmaceuticals, manufacturing, and aerospace and defense. M my focus now really is on I've got a bit of an industry portfolio within Olive Horse, um, just to make sure that our solutions and services align with uh, different industry sectors. Thank you, Riaz. Uh, and of course, myself, uh, Fred Kufo, uh, MD of Olive Horse. Um, a lot of years doing supply chain, end-to-end uh, -end supply chain, right from you know uh, demand forecasting all the way through to to, to shop floor controls uh, as well. Um, yeah, and, and generally engaging with clients um, and stakeholders at all levels. Um, my main passion is is not just the implementation, but it's actually just helping customers and guiding customers to ensure that you know you you get value from the investments that you make in in, in systems, in processes, uh, in the people, and also that people actually enjoy their jobs, um, enjoy what they're doing, are productive, and able to really contribute and, and make a difference. Excellent. So let's let's get underway. Um, it is a well subscribed uh, session. So thank you very much for, for taking uh, interest. Uh, we have a lot of content to, to share and, and hopefully you'll find a patch, uh, panel discussion useful. Part of the feedback from the first session um, was that, you know, you, you wanted more um, shared in, in content uh, in, in, in terms of the slides that were present. And, and that's what we've, we've done today. So it's going to be a packed, um, you know, 40 minutes or, or, or so. Our first session, um, first webinar was themed how to deliver the IBP business case. And, and Paul and I normally go back and forth on on, on getting the right title and, and pitch to make sure that we, we get the message across. But just to cover some of the key highlights, which I think are quite important. You know, Paul in that session pointed out that IBP is a management process. We mustn't forget technology is an enabler. IBP systems are out there, but they are not <laughs> the, the, the process the management of the process is, is key to, to success. And, and, and the other point was that effective IBP processes actually result in the title of the session, you know, you increasing profits, improving uh, overall customer service, but creating greater productivity within the business because you're taking a holistic perspective um, of, of the business right through from, from finance all, all, all the way out, um, out of the door into, into uh, to the customer. And the starting point we recognize and we will share our, our findings and, and experiences through through Ben and Riaz as well, is that businesses have different starting points for, for integrated business planning projects. And we certainly, that is our challenge from a consulting uh, uh, perspective. 
And then finally, to close that session, we asked the um, the, the panel, you know, what what success, if they could pick one thing for success in, in IBP uh, endeavors, what they would, would they be? Um, and we were joined by SAP there as well. So it was willingness to embrace change, which is actually very key. And that's um, leadership commitment, uh, demonstrating their ambition uh, to, to, to actually make a change. But also, and we would say this, but it's very true in, 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 in terms of our experience, seeking appropriate specialist uh, experience as well. Okay, so it sets the stage for today's session. Today's session, um, is going, we're going to focus, will be a series of questions I'll be putting to the panel um, and they'll be open to answer. You'll have a, an opportunity to then um, ask questions at the end, but we will cover you know, the benefits of, of IBP and why we should begin with the strategic execution. And Paul will have a very strong voice on that. We'll also look at how what we do every day. How do we assess an organization's maturity and therefore we'll use that to drive into um, the type of implementation um, that needs to take place across, as I say, the people and behaviors as well as the tools and the technology. Um, and we'll see, we'll, we'll discuss a little bit about what really makes it um, effective change and brings about that change because the beginning of the journey is only after you've gone live with a solution that meets all of the stakeholders' needs. And then beyond that, how do you? Um, embed and sustain, create sustainability and continue with uh, capability growth to ensure that you're always you know, driving value. So, so that's the agenda uh, for, for, for the next uh, 30 to 35 minutes. Okay. Um, and yeah, benefits are obviously, we, we do a lot of these. I'm sure many of you on the other side uh, of the screen do as well. Um, so we'll, we'll share our experiences. But you know, if you're an organization that is considering um, an integrated business planning um, program, or you're in the early stages, or you have, but you don't believe or feel you're getting sufficient value from that, then then this this is um, your the right webinar for today. Okay. Right. So um, let's kick off. <laughs> um, the first, as I said, the benefits of beginning with strategy execution, um, and I'd like. To, to, to really put that question to Paul. Why is it important? Why don't we just go in and implement SAP IBP or, or Kinaxis or, or another system, Paul? Yeah, great great question, I think, to start. Um, I mean, ultimately, ultimately, you, clients are running businesses and, and those businesses have got ambition, you know, and, and typically the ambition we hear is to grow, you know, drive market share. Uh, you know, to beat the competition, you know, to make sure that the, you know, the, the profits double or treble over a period, right? So, I mean, the, the, these, these, are, these, are, these are fantastic goals to, to talk about. However, you know, if you're, if you're working in an organization, then we need to be able to break the, you know, the ambition down into its component parts. You know, you know what, what is it we want to achieve might be clear, but then how do we do it? So how do we achieve it? Uh, and then who's accountable for delivering it? So if you think of I think of integrated business planning, I mean that's the process we want to use as our as our key enabler. So it becomes our primary management process, and it means that we have to put strategy at the heart of IBP. So it's no longer a philosophical discussion about a horizon, or it's no longer a philosophical discussion about you know at what level of hierarchy do we want to talk about the business. You know we we put the we put the key initiatives the key priorities of the business at the heart of the process, Fred. And, and, and we break it down clearly. We have to break it down into what does that mean for the portfolio, you know, our products and our services, or our services if, if we're a service type company. What does it mean for our sales and marketing and our customers, our markets? What does that mean for our demand? What does it mean for our supply chain response? You know, our, our networks, our investments. What does it you know? What does it mean? What does it mean for our, our, our financial investments around mergers and acquisitions? All right. So it's taking the strategy of the business, breaking it down into its component parts, so that every so it's tangible for the organisation, and and then we embed it in the IBP process. So every time we run run an IBP cycle, we're asking the question: Are we are we still aligned with our, our business strategy or business goals? Yes or no. And if the answer is no, then clearly we have we have to act. We have to go into action, and and yeah. and we're we're really interested in managing it over the medium and the longer term, right? So recognizing that 
our ability to influence what happens in the next one, two, or three, four months is limited. Even yeah. in even in consumer business, it's limited, right? So, so really, as a primary management process, the strategy has to come to life in the medium and longer term, enabled by IBP. And then, just the last piece is that to, to mention the, the connector between you know, if I think of all of our white in terms of what we focus on versus all of us, I think the you know the, the the systems and the the ability to use and manage data effectively now has become so important. You know, particularly when you think of tracking strategy and making sure we have that alignment. Excellent. And, and, and Paul, it looks because you know, from what we have on our screen, who who gets involved? Because it's there's some long horizons in there, and therefore you have to have a very far view of of strategy for the organisation, as you say, versus that three to four months in that S and O P type bubble um, of generating to, to to keep aligned to this to the overall strategy. Yeah, absolutely. So from an IBP perspective, clearly the linkage to strategy is, you know, is, is, is building that bridge. So the, 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 the typical IBP process I work with now in terms of time horizon is probably about three years, two to three years, typically more three years now. And that's based on the investment profile. You know, if I need to build a new plant, then it's going to take me X. You know, if I want to bring in new technology, it's going to take me, you know, this long. So that that kind of drives the horizon. And then the people who are the people who are essentially running the process is the senior leadership of the business, uh, who are ultimately accountable, and the, the, the probably the next level down. You know, they they've got the, they've got the biggest parts to play because, as I say, reiterate, this is the primary management process of the business. Absolutely, excellent. Uh, thank you, Paul. Um, great great answers. And I, and I guess over to. Uh, my colleagues from Oliver, so let, let's take Ben. Ben, I mean, for us, is it really important? You know, we we we, we tend to have a view of we're operationally making making IBP work uh, versus the strategy, but we're trying to consider that. So, you know, what happens if we don't? Are there examples where we have or, or haven't? Yeah, I, I think you, you made a point earlier, Fred, about entry points. Different customers have different entry points. Uh, you know, some may have a, a mature uh, IBP process uh, in place, some some don't. So uh, the, there are definitely benefits w when they do, right? Um, as we know, operational planning systems um, should always support good process. And the strategy defines that process. Uh, so uh, the, 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 the big thing is, I think from, from our perspective is, is, is twofold, is that the process prov provides a drumbeat, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, that, that's critical for, for any operational planning system in order to support that drumbeat. Um, but also, you know, it provides the input into that drumbeat. So, so that the, the, the leadership can make eff effective decisions within that IBP space. Uh, I think critical what the strategy does, um, aligning with the process, is it aligns stakeholders across uh, the business um, from top to bottom. Uh, and we see, especially when implementing planning systems, if that alignment of stakeholders doesn't happen, uh, a simple example, for instance, is is dedicated resource on a project, right? Um, you know, we can't run planning projects or, or systems uh, without having that strong engagement from the business. So we, we believe that that strategy top down mm -hmm. into the process side of things um, provides that that buy in from the business. So, so when you do have it uh, compared to when you don't is is a, a real implementation focus, right? Uh, yeah. From those stakeholders, uh, the stakeholder engagement, as I mentioned earlier, and then something we are quite passionate about is the the longevity uh, of the pro program, right? Because it's the the actual operational planning program or implementation is supporting something bigger um, than just executing an operational plan right uh, and and i think that's yeah. one of the key advantages so so there is that alignment as you're saying between the strategy you know because we, we are very used to program leaders you know making big statements uh, from the start in order to to to, to rouse the, the the implementation but then as well as that you need to deliver that through 
you know, on the on on the operational side of, of the activity. No, I appreciate exactly. that. Um, and I guess we have maybe another perspective in terms of when we start to look at systems and data and the disconnect um, that we we're, we're quite used to, and and how cloud computing and digital solutions have moved ahead. You know, what sort of impact is that having? Do you think, and how does that align with, with uh, the strategic execution? Yeah, I think. Um... You know, from our experience, we, you know, we've been doing this job a long time now. So over the years, we've mm -hmm. seen um, traditionally that there is a, you know, there has been a disconnect really between um, what we're seeing from a systems perspective and the, the technology investment and really what the business strategies are. Um, you know, some of this is, I guess, has been down to lack of knowledge, lack of understanding of what the capabilities are, but also this lack of alignment between what the broader um, strategy is. I think you know, we need to tread carefully going forward. There's there's a plethora of uh, new technologies being offered out there now. Um, you know, both from the perspective of cloud computing, AI, you know, blockchain, all the rest of it. Um, you know, there's there's you know there's a lot of innovations, a lot of new concepts coming out there as well. And so I think it's more important than ever to really remain grounded in the strategy that you're trying to drive. Um, you know, with things like IBP and, and you know, driving longer term growth prospects, et cetera, and mm -hmm. what you really need, because there's a risk of, again, just repeating the same mistakes that were made years ago now. Um, so, yeah, I think it's, 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 it's getting a good grasp of what the strategy is and how yeah. that aligns with what's on offer, really, from, this, from mm -hmm. vendors. Excellent. I guess in summary to this as well, it, as we say, strategy is important. But what, what I've noticed also from a system perspective and, and something that our relationship with Ollie White, you know, educated us in, in terms of the system landscape to support you know, the management processes that actually no one system completely embodies the functionality to support um, all of the activities uh, that occur. So even if we take a SAP platform, you, you know, you are looking at you know, uh, SAP Analytics Cloud, you are looking at IBP, you are looking at Ariba, you are looking at S4, and you're bringing that, all of that together, as well as the holistic business processes across finance and supply chain, and procurement, et cetera, all, all coming in together. So that front-end vision uh, is, is hugely uh, important. No, that, that's great. Thank you very much for, for that. So let, let's, let's move the needle on a little bit now, um, an area that, again, is close to my heart. I really do enjoy this activity. You know, how how do we really assess an organization's maturity? Everyone's going around these days talking about resilience, like obviously COVID, the challenges that we've faced, and and, and and what does maturity really mean, first of all, and, and how do we go about assessing it? Um, and then once we've done that, how do we take that insight and convert it into the type of implementation that should deliver success? And I'll, I'll start with yourself, Paul, once again. Okay, thanks, Fred. Um, okay, so what you can see in the screen is just a simplified version of, uh, you know, m maturity of a business as we view it from an Oliver White perspective. So, uh, and I think, it's, I think it's fair to say that uh, our focus has been traditionally as an organization uh, on the processes that organizations are using and on the, the people and behaviors. So the capabilities and the behaviors that they display. So a big part of our push for working with all of us is that, you know, we've, we recognized that there was a weakness in our approach, Fred, in terms of understanding the maturity of an organization, you know, particularly if we're not looking at the systems and the data landscape elements all right so really important you know i mean data and the system that the systems that carry the data is is the lifeblood of any organization connecting it top to bottom so you know we need we needed to we needed to pull that in but irrespective of of that approach you know we've got what we call the oliver white proven path right sorry um and then as part of that, we, we look at the early and the proven path, we look deeply at the maturity of an organization. And you can see in front of you, you can see, you know, we, we use uh, what we call our seventh edition, you know, uh, in terms of um, a class A standard, the all white class A standard. Some people on the call might be familiar with it. So we are now in our seventh edition of that. And, and, and that's a fully, in, a fully encompassing, uh, you know, view of, what a business would require to run itself end to end, end to end. So it takes in all the elements of 
you know, strategy definition. It takes in, you know, attitude to change management. It takes in, you know, portfolio management, demand management, supply management, financial reconciliation, etc. So it's all encompassing. And then you can see in front of you. I'm not going to. I'm not going to go deeply through this, but you can recognise that. We, you know, our our approach is 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 fairly casual in the sense of we we spend time with key players within the organization. So we might speak to 40, 50, 60, 100 people in the organization, like in a, uh, you know, in a conversational basis. And we are asking them questions that drive us you know, to a conclusion in terms of their maturity. But recognizing that you know, to enable this, we have to start with the leadership of the business, Fred. So we always start with the leadership. You know, you know, where, where is this business? How is it operating today? What is the ambition for the business? You know, what, where are, where are the pain points? You know, where are the strengths today? And then we work outwards through the organisation. So from that, we create, we create a baseline, and then we pitch, we pitch it somewhere in the chart. You know, you can see disconnected through foundational processes through to what we would call capable from an IBP perspective. And then and then from from that we're then we're then driving our approach in terms of you know designing designing a, a an approach to implement IDP around the organization. Excellent. So so yeah, there is a clear uh, framework and uh, obviously it's 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 well practiced as, uh, as well. Um, but it sounds like it brings out all the elements in order that you you you, know, you have a rich picture to 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 start to evolve and, and, and make a maturity decision I, I i guess for the business yeah we've, been, over, we've, we've been doing this for over 40 years over 40 years with this type of approach so it's just yeah. evolving continually and this is a really old slide you can imagine right yeah you know, it's been, but it's been, been, but, has been at the forefront of you know from mrp to s and op through to ibp and uh, yeah. I, I guess so you yeah. know no, thank you paul that's great and and i guess over to um uh, to, to the Olaf, the Olaf Force guys um uh, let's, let's start with with, with Ben. Uh, you know, we our majority framework is something we hold you know very dear to ourselves and guides us uh, with, with each client engagement. If you could, you know, just uh, talk a bit more about that, please, Ben. Yeah, yeah sure. I, I think, uh, and I mentioned this briefly before. You know, there's there's a few key things that that shapes a roadmap uh, in terms of each client, and that's. You know the complexity of the supply chain of course the size of the client but but very important is is the maturity right uh how mature is that client within within their supply chain uh, and the operations that go on uh, behind that and also very important the the touch points into other areas such as finance and procurement whatever those may be uh in terms of integrating with with the supply chain um, so our maturity assessment is is more operationally driven, uh, with with a focus on people, process, data, and systems, as as you can see uh, from the slide. And then we we assess you in each of those areas from from left to right in terms of how reactive you are, or how mature you are, how agile you are, uh, it, across those those four pillars. Um, stakeholders are key um within the assessment right and and we usually kick the assessment off with a with a project kickoff aligning everyone as to what will happen through, throughout the process and that's not only the operational supply chain guys but that's also the leadership team so so that's very key um and and the questionnaires that then go out are also going out across that stakeholder list so so you might get a, a very interesting answer from from the leadership team versus what you get from uh, from the operational team um, I, I, I think as I mentioned understanding the the maturity helps shape the project and I, I think Riaz you 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 will be looking looking at this right uh, uh, because out of the assessment uh, based on the maturity we can start yeah. building clear roadmaps. Excellent, uh, and, and I guess thank you, Ben, and, and, and that's absolutely right. So this is again similar to OW, a very repeatable process, but but I think somewhere the two have to um, come come together. And 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 Riaz, if we, we turn to yourself for for, for that, you know, in terms of how do we complement each other, and as Ben and, and, and Paul were saying, how do we then take the maturity understanding and and actually carve out a roadmap for the business? 
Yeah, absolutely. I think <clears throat> just to reiterate again a little bit in terms of the Ollie White and Olive Horse collaboration, I guess from an Ollie White perspective, <clears throat> you know, traditionally and, and going forward as well, it's about engaging with the executive team to design, you know, real processes that deliver, you know, business performance and, and really drive that strategy. Whereas traditionally, from an Olive Horse perspective, we've been focused more on the, 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 the systems and how the systems can satisfy that strategy. But, but when we come coming together, I think um, effectively in terms of systems development, we're kind of identifying four effective premise, premises for, for really moving you forward. I guess the first one is around um, uh, extend, which is really around improving uh, the maturity of specific planning functions. So um, typically, this is typically what we'd what we'd look to do from an, uh, an SNMP improvements capability. It's really about extending that supply and demand um, methodologies and really making better use of the capability and the functionality that you've already invested in. Um, another option is around in enhancing your existing platforms. So this is again, this is about adding capability and adding functionality to your existing systems. So in principle, it's, you're keeping your existing systems, but you know we're identifying where you're lacking um, capability to 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 deliver that strategy. I mean, a few examples that we've been working on recently are things like um, the dynamic production wheel concept, for instance which is really around where you, where you can take sequencing concepts and change over concepts, which normally would reside in the kind of the, the short-term scheduling world, but actually using that information for midterm planning so that you can get more efficient use for midterm mid plans, you know, DDMRP and demand-driven SNOP type concepts and things like that. So the, these are new planning concepts that can come in over and overlay your existing APS platforms really. And then when we talk towards you know new 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 technologies really, um, and looking towards the vendors and and what else is out there on offer, um, the first option there is around migration, which is really around um, you know it's a replatforming exercise more than anything else. So this is taking existing ways of working, existing methodologies, and overlaying them onto the new technology, um, with the view and the aim to be minimally disruptive. So this is about getting to some getting to a baseline solution that you can then build on uh, very quickly. And then the final one really is the, is the transformation, which is really around, you know, the full systems and the, 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 the business process transformation, really. So, yeah. And I, and I guess in all of this, thank you for that, Riaz, is that, you know, the, the process of strategic deployment of the management process is, is, is sitting over that, but we're looking potentially at the system and data exercise and saying, oh, well, maybe the organization doesn't have s and OP functionality, so let's extend it to support the process, right, as you say, or let's enhance demand planning capabilities so you can start to take account, you know, use of, improve your consensus demand process and, and, and bring in more AI type uh, uh, functionality Absolutely. to support. Uh, yeah, for I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of going back to the previous points we were making around every organization is going to have a different starting point, every organization is going to have a different level of maturity. But ultimately, yeah. you know, through through an exercise, you can go and determine what your ultimate strategy is. So, yeah. you know, based on where you are and what your appetite is for investment, et cetera, there are different ways of achieving that um, ultimate objective. Yeah. So thank you so far, gentlemen. I think some, some very good answers coming back. Um, so uh, let's move things on a bit. And, you know, it's all great. We're, we're talking about the management process. We've talked about um, fantastic digital supply chain solutions to enable to enable the management process. But we need to organize well so that we actually we don't drag on. We don't miss requirements. <laughs> um, people understand the direction we're going. These are all common things we know, right, after what, what happens after a project. So how do we make sure that, you know, we, we do iron these 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 things out uh, to ensure that you know we're we're driving effective change management. Um, and I may just switch things. Now. I'll keep it with Paul, but for, for now, so Paul, if you'd like to lead on on this conversation. Sure. Um, I, I I mean I referenced in the in the in the maturity chart. I referenced um, you know in terms of the all of a white proven path. So we 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 have we have a we have a clear pathway. Uh, to you know, first of all, diagnosing you know where the where the business is in terms of its maturity, understanding the business imperatives, you know, the current trading in, environment and performance, you know, and the and the planning maturity that we've already discussed, right? So, you know, so that's 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 the entry point for us, and and at that stage we are we are engaging primarily with the leadership team. Uh, Fred, right? So we're starting at the top of the business saying, what's compelling for you? 
where do you want to drive this business? And then we and then we dive into the, the individual planning elements. And then and then we, we synthesize that, we bring that back together again in terms of uh, providing you know, feedback to the to the exec, to the leadership team that says, this is where you are as a business versus your ambition versus the, the planning maturity you have. Uh, and then if you, you know, and clearly if you want to improve, you know, in these areas, whether it's supply chain or portfolio or demand or all, yeah, then this is this is how you would do it. You know, so we clearly have to articulate the journey at that stage. And then that's when, you know, when you think of change management, what, what we really need the, the leadership team to do is to understand what, what it will take to, to go through that journey uh, and, and make the priority calls, right? Make the priority decisions, you know, essentially walk the walk, you know, not just, not just sign a check and say, you know, we, we, you know, we want to do IBP. Truly, are, are they prepared to invest the, the time, energy and emotion that it's going to take, you know. So from that from from that point onwards, then, you know, we are, you know, we're providing uh, education. So we've got the commitment for the leadership, and then we're providing education to a, 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 a proportion of the organisation. So some handpick key players uh, within the organisation. We help them understand what IB, IBP is, uh, and and then and then the next step is to move to design. So we take the IBP philosophy and IBP concepts and then we apply them to the organization using their own teams, using their own experience, because we have to we have to mold the process around the business. It's not cookie cutter. It's not plug and play IBP. It has to be designed with the unique nature of the business uh, understood. Yeah. And then the last step really is to finalize the design. So once we've created the design using those, you know, using those key players in the business, we, we we then we then go back to the executive team and then we we make sure that we are happy with the design so that kind of takes us into the change loop from that perspective fantastic so there's a continuous connection driving through right from education uh all the way through uh, that's great thank you paul and and i guess the, the same question um ben if we can we can have you is there anything specific that olive horse does differently per se that that makes you know <laughs> uh gives us our track track record, if you could uh, talk a little bit about our approach. Ben's on mute. Ah, yes. Ben, the dreaded <laughs> mute button. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Riaz, you could, uh, would you? There we go. Oh, we sorry. Two too too many systems open right um yeah I, th I think the key thing is is that stakeholder engagement fred and and um they, I've, I've kind of split it into three areas when it when it comes to change management implementing these systems it's the first one is gearing up right getting ready for the program and and getting those stakeholders on board but also clearly defining the kpis for the project um and articulating the roadmap uh, to 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 the whole team that will be involved. I think that's key. Um, one thing we do differently than than any other approach I've seen before is that we actually train the key users, uh, or, or sometimes the, the the whole team, including the leadership, etc., on the system before we start the design, or sometimes in parallel with the design, so they get an early insight as to what the system is going to look like. Um, so that's quite unique. We, we then follow that up again uh, before the UAT with, with another training um, program. So, so the, 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 the users get a bite twice of the pie, which, which, which is something we do different and something that is really taken up positively by, by the, the, the teams involved. Then the second one is transitioning, right? So. Uh, using that agile approach that, that we do in Olive Horse, um, where the users can actually, during implementation and during the, 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 the sprints, is to start seeing the functionality with, with, within the system. And sometimes, depending on how the roadmap is shaped, after sprint one, there is some functionality that's that drives value already. I mean, we've recently done a project where we've delivered a, a fairly simple but uh, effective and operational demand planning system in 12 weeks, 
right? So your program could be six months long, but within 12 weeks, you can already drive some benefits. So, so that's something fairly different to the old traditional ways. And then the last point, just very briefly, is um, appointing real change heroes, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and by that, I mean people who can drive the embed and sustain program forward. I, I think yeah. that's key. So people who are enthusiastic, people who know the business, um, and, and people who are positive, about the change that has been made. Excellent, and, and that really underpins, you know, the mitigation of project risk. Um, uh, and we must remember that obviously change is all about people, right? It's not, it's not about just exactly. the process and the system. It, it's all about people. And I guess Ria is just um, a, a, conscious of our time. I, right. I really hate to say that, but you know, how do we drive that? user change that user adoption yeah. through our process yeah. i think that's the key isn't it really so it's really reiterating what ben has just been talking about which is every, every you know, what we've learned over the years now in, in doing this type of activity is that um to get real traction and benefit and roi from the investment it's really about driving user adoption so you know historically when we you know come to you know, big projects we find that user adoption is really pushed towards the back end of uh, the, the the process, maybe a little bit of training towards the back end prior to UAT, and then a little bit of user training. We're, we're, our approach is quite different, really. As Ben st stated, we you know, we make that at the heart of um, progressing the design all the way through um, to um, implementation, and even beyond that through the coaching and the ongoing. You know, we, we, in terms of Olive Horse Care, which is capability that we offer, is around ongoing coaching and uh, support for um, for uh, for uh, for planners really to ensure that systems are really well adopted. Excellent. That's great answers. Thank you. Um, so, again, good answers uh, so far. And we've got uh, some good questions coming in, which we'll address shortly. So we're at the end of, of the session now and, and we've we've implemented. Right. But how do we sustainably you know, deliver, continue to deliver uh, performance and, and just to drive that ongoing continuous improvement in capability development? Um, how do we make it stick? I think that's the big question. And let, let's lead with the olive horse team because uh, we do a lot of low level making it stick <laughs> every day so we can drive benefit so um ben from from your side um what do we do uh, yeah I, I think the the key is 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 and i'm thinking post implementation now is is choosing the right partner right uh, to do your application support because sometimes you you get a uh, a Rolls Royce team in to, to do your implementation, but then uh, you, you don't do the same for application support. And by that, I mean having someone have a bit of a different approach. Uh, we, for instance, as part of our application support, we introduce things like clinics. So um, the, the client can, let's say, twice a month have a four-hour clinic with our consultants. And any planners who are struggling with data, with ways of working, uh, out of the implementation, they can come into the clinic and 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 have someone that that knows their system mm. help them move forward. So I think that's number one. Um, and and the other thing is, it's so important, uh, and it's a bit of an investment from the business side, right? But a process that is in place in order to revisit your your planner capability, I think that is critical. Mm. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you, Ben. I guess what we're seeing here is, you know, just it's the Olive Horse customer journey. It's the things that we do to drive and, and maximize value post implementation. Um, Riaz, we're also seeing a, a new trend building up that we're, we're, we're trying to lead uh, and, and a few words around the audits that we, we, we do mm. that really supports some of what Ben, ben has talked about. I think one of the challenges that we've always seen um, is the is the is the concept of the COE, so the center of excellence, and supporting that center of excellence to drive, um, you know, consistent behaviors, consistent systems usage, and, and you know, identify gaps. Um, that's all, that's quite a struggle, particularly for large global organizations where you have you know not huge COEs, um, but but it is it is critical and it is key, and where we've seen real successes where they're strong. So one of the things that we're, we're starting to see now is this concept of um, um, COE system supported, well, not just systems, but the whole kind of you know, planning process supported audits. So this is where, you know, well-designed, well-thought-through audit procedures are um, 
defined for mm -hmm. businesses. Then regionally, we can go out and then actually periodically conduct audits to make sure that you know, you're driving consistent behavior, consistent methodologies, that the KPI and the metrics are consistent as well. And then collectively, you bring the organization up uh, the maturity ladder, really, because you know, you know you've got a good starting point and you, you, you've got clarity of, um, of, uh, yeah. of the approach, really. Yeah. Well, so that's that's something that we're seeing a lot more of. It's a growing area for work for, for, for us as well. Absolutely. And, and I guess then over to yourself, Paul, um, you know, taking that holistic and the big picture and the strategic execution, how, how does Oliver White then ensure that at that strategic deployment level? we are sustaining, you know, what we started out to, to deliver. Yeah. yeah. So as part of a, our Class A standard, there are, there are hard and fast performance measures, uh, Fred, that organizations have to achieve to, to actually meet the standard. So, so we, you know, we, we embed those inside the, the different functions. So whether it's, you know, portfolio, demand, supply. So, so clearly we are, we are tracking that improvement and we are providing coaching and guidance along the journey. So, right, so we, we, we implement fast. So we, we design and implement fast and then we, we handhold the organization to some extent, you know, through the journey. And not every day, we don't live with the clients, but, you know, we, we periodically work with them and then, and, then we, and then we have intervention points, you know, where we, we'll sit in the reviews, where we'll talk to the key people, we'll provide coaching to get over, uh, you know, uh, maybe process issues. But as important is we are also engaging uh, with the, the teams, the leadership and, and others in terms of the behaviours that they, they need to address. Because we can, we, can, we can implement the world's best process, but if we're, if we're not behaving in the right way, it, it, completely, it completely falls over, right? So, so that's our approach is, is coaching, and, coaching and guiding and challenging towards a standard, you know, to a standard destination, you know, which is a high level of performance for clients. Excellent. Uh, it's that old um, behavioral paradigm, intent on one side and behavior on the other, and the gap between can be uh, as long as you, <laughs> you can make it. I appreciate that, Paul. Um, and I guess for the audience, again, thank you. We are, I um, realize obviously a lot of you uh, will, have, will have very, very busy days. So for those who need to jump off, um, we will make this uh, replay available. We will send through some informative slides uh, that you can refer to. And please do connect with our marketing and, and, and sales teams or directly with anyone here. We've got a few questions to come in, which are some great questions. So we'll then now spend the sort of next 10 to 15 minutes. So anyone who wants to hang on, to, 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 to answer some of these questions. Um, so please keep sending them through. Um, the first one that I'd like to pick up is a great question uh, in from uh, uh, Timo. How would, you, how would you respond to a person who thinks that spending time setting a long-term vision and educating the stakeholders is too theoretic versus just putting the process quickly up and running and learning as you go? I do like that. It's a challenge we face. Uh, Paul is smiling away. I'm going to go with you first because I think you might have a great answer to this. But uh, let's well, see. let's see. Let's see. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's a it's a perennial. You know, I mean, I, I was a leader in business, so you know, patience is not a virtue when you're in mm -hmm. leadership positions. Typically, right? You know, you want results, you want them fast. However, I think there has to be a recognition. So the analogy I would use, Fred, is. You know, if, if you want to, if you want to learn to you want to learn to drive a car, right? So you've got two options. You know, option one is we we don't want to worry about the theory. You know, we don't want any support. Just we just give people the car keys and we ask them to go, right? So they'll eventually they eventually they'll learn, right? You know, there'll be a few bumps and, and and accidents along the way, but they'll eventually get there, right? But it will be problematic for us as a as a business versus. You know, we get we get a, a talented instructor. You know, we give them some tuition, and we and we have we have dual we have dual controls in the car, so we can speed up and slow down, and we can avoid the obstacles as necessary. So I think it's trying to get it's trying to get you know leaders particularly to under to understand that sometimes to sometimes to go fast and accelerate from a performance perspective, you need you need support and guidance. Okay, so I think it's it, it is a philosophical discussion at the beginning. But we've yeah. got we've got lots of uh, empirical data 
to show that you know running an, an IBP process brings huge benefits for the organisation. But the but if you if you don't have the the appetite or you don't have you don't have the commitment, then don't do it. Just don't do it from a leadership perspective. Excellent, that's a great answer. Um, so I guess let's let's field this question a bit more to to Ben or, or, or Riaz. Is there a an alternative view or is there a supporting view uh, to, to, to this question? I mean, as I said right at the beginning, Fred, it it, it obviously uh, depends on complexity, size, and maturity. I think that that we we have to think about that. So a lot of companies don't take that approach. But what we have seen from from our experience is that if there is that strong framework uh, with an operational planning system uh, supporting a, a bigger process, the the first firstly the standardization of work across the planning teams is enhanced and secondly the longevity of the the solution is enhanced as well because the operational planning system is supporting more than just operational planning if, if that makes sense so so where where that framework is not there you it's quite easy for users to to start working on spreadsheets creating their own reports and, and working in a, a very disconnected way. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm just rereading the question and it's around um, educating existing stakeholders being very theoretical versus just putting the process in quickly up and running and learning as you go. There's obviously a risk, isn't there? Um, um, you know, we can put, you can, we can, and this is going back to what I was saying before, the past 20 years, we've been trying to put in SNOP type processes, but not necessarily with the the, the systems capability and the systems backup to make that an efficient way of working. So mm -hmm. you go to a lot of businesses and there's days and days of effort to pull and collate information together in order to su support the SNOP process. Mm -hmm. And that's the that's the risk that you're running by not um, you know properly considering what else is out there to help support that to make that more efficient. Because the reality is if you try and force those processes in, they're just gonna you know, people are just not going to bother or they're going to be very inefficient and it's just going to drift away over time. And that's what we're really trying to avoid now yeah. um, based on experience. So, yeah. Well, that's good. I, I'm going to be a slight contrarian, but uh, there's a hidden message in this. You know, I tend to call what Timo is referring to as, um, it's, it's almost like we're doing SNOP or we're focusing in on enhancing our demand functionality. We're operationally just trying to get going. We're using a system to enable it, but usually, some work has already been carried out, potentially like an organization like Oliver White. But that's my, my point being, you know, that even that work could happen a bit later, but you're getting the system in Timo, uh, and then and then you're, you're getting people to use it. So it's almost like you're starting from the bottom up rather than the, the, the top down, slightly contrarian. But that's why, you know, we market approaches such as, you know, implementing uh, S and OP within 12 weeks, getting up and running with, with Anaplan uh, within eight weeks, um, putting in a maturity pack that drives, you know, demand improvement or supply improvement. But the warning being that actually, if you want real value and you want to be doing IBP, the objective and messages from this session are, are key. Um, we'll take one more question um, and um, somebody who we've worked with and, and know well, uh, Luke, nice to have you here. Um, Luke's question is, what trends are you seeing with regards to supply and demand planning using AI uh, and automation? And how does this new opportunity transform the business's need to work uh, in a rule-based manner? Uh, I'll open the floor to anyone who'd like to pick that one up. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Go on, Paul. <laughs> I guess uh, one of the, I mean, I, I did I did touch on it earlier. One of the things that we are seeing is, um, I guess, from my perspective, it's, also, it's always been around the tool set should be fit for purpose for its, for its intention, okay? So quite often we're trying to use and force in operational planning tools down at the SKU level, at the wrong level of aggregation to try and drive an SNOP midterm planning message uh, or information. And that that, you know, traditionally, I think a lot of systems have struggled with. So, you know, one of the things that we're exploring now is this whole concept of this dynamic production wheel, which is really around yeah. aggregate level planning using, you know, op in AI driven optimization methods, to, but bring and kind of, um, you know, bring in additional 
concepts such as sequencing and um, representation of changeover, so you get ac you know, accuracy at the aggregate level, and using that to really help drive an SNOP number that then drive that then seamlessly kind of flows into the operational plan in the short term. So uh, it's, it's in my mind, it's things like that which is around that the trend should be around that the tool set should be appropriate and fit for purpose for its intended need, effectively. So yeah, yeah. Certainly, um, what we're seeing is a lot of automatic de detection. I, I would say, Ria. So mm -hmm. you know, detection and outlier detection. You know, using AI for you know demand sensing. Um, it's all about detection, and and also as you just said, with production wheels. Again, you know, it's. It, AI and inventory to 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 determine to find out the patterns that are frequently occurring and actually then self healing back into that supply chain. And I think that's what the production wheel is also very 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 much uh, about. So those are some of the key trends that we we we're certainly um, between our businesses seeing customers and having those sorts of levels of conversation uh, about. One of the more recent ones is some very clever things around profile analysis within. You know, utility businesses that you know granularly forecast at a very low level, but actually depend on that top-level strategic forecast. So, profile analysis is also a big area that um, uh, that, that we're seeing coming through. Any any further comments? Yeah, I, I think also, uh, Fred, something that I've picked up recently on AI and automation is that they are enablers as well. You know, mm -hmm. so that speed to decision for the for the planner is is enabled because of of a lot of automation going on in the background for them so they don't have to touch everything as you say ai as a filter as well um and and what does that speed to decision bring is the capability for instance to do more scenario planning right mm -hmm. and and how that supports that wider snop process excellent no, that's great. Um, great questions and, and hopefully some, some useful answers as well. Um, I will now, I think we, we'll, we'll draw this to a close. I think we could probably sit here and chat all day, but I think everyone's got, uh, has to have a bit of lunch and then get back into, into meetings and customers as well. Um, so, you know, first of all, thank you uh, to, to, to Paul from, from, from Oliver White, and hopefully we'll, we'll look to do another session like this and, and to Ben and Riaz from Olive Force. And in the background, uh, uh, Elodie, who is uh, from, from our marketing team, our head of marketing, and please do reach out with any questions you have to, and then of course to, to everyone who uh, attended this uh, session and also who sent in questions. Um, we'll look forward to, to speaking to you again soon. Have a good afternoon. Excellent. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye.